Good evening. It's cool to have such a crowd here um, to be interested in blockchains. So what we wanted today to do with the two of us today is basically to introduce you to blockchain before we get then to the real interesting stuff for the panel discussion. Basically we want to do that in three chapters. First, define a bit what is blockchain. Second, to give you some examples where blockchain is already been used and then give you an overall assessment of what we believe it is. When we start the first chapter, I'd like to bring you on a little journey I went through myself. So if you take the gentleman on the very left side, I could be myself. I think the only difference is, but I think what, what we can learn out of that is that many people talk about blockchains and they have basically no clue what it is. Um, if I continue my little journey that I had no clue in the very initial uh, time when I was uh, thinking about blockchain, I started to, uh, to understand what intelligent people were talking about blockchain and therefore I checked consultancies, I checked university, yeah, and I checked people investing in blockchain. And basically there was one common theme, blockchain is something big, could be as big as internet, the World Wide Web, so it's really a, block, uh, it's really a kind of game changer. Therefore, on this backdrop, I thought it makes sense to really understand a bit better what is the technology about and what we are talking about. And therefore, basically, I was searching for another person, let's go to the next slide, who is very intelligent and knows much of uh, uh, what's happening in the world, which is Klaus Schwab. And he gave a very brief explanation of blockchain, which basically I started to understand before we get into more de technical details. So I understood that blockchain is something which is shared. The blockchain done by myself basically has no value. So it's shared. It can be programmed, it's secure, it's trusted, and moreover. Therefore I thought, okay, that's interesting. Now let's understand what the technical details. And that's one part where I basically stopped myself and thought the right person to ask would be Dennis. Thank you. Before I start going into the technical details, and no, don't be so worried, I will not be so tech. So I want to talk, for me blockchain, it's more about community, yeah? so it's more about people, it's, you could not produce new technology without community, and that's why I really enjoy to speak with the audience and so many people and so many interests, dialogues already here and probably will be after presentations. And let's see, if we talked about like uh, what we could save into the block, it could be different. We could talk about tokenization, we could talk about new digital assets, yeah, but it's just a block. You save something into the block and as soon as you want to use it or change ownership, you will submit your transaction into the chain. And actually, chain is like a number of nodes which each participant could have. It could be different based on is it private or public, so participants could be like a million participants or just two of your friends, but it's some number of the node. And transaction will be broadcasted via that network and savings like that. And actually I want to highlight transaction will be verified via network. And this is really important. Because here blockchain could add truth or trust into trustless environments. Yeah? If for example, how Bitcoin works or how other works, no one trusts each other because we simply don't know each other, but we trust the network. We trust the rules inside of that network. We trust network will not save bad transactions inside of that. It could not be double spending if you sell about cryptocurrencies. It could not be other bad things. And as soon as the transaction is saved into the blockchain, it would be close to immutable. And usually everyone who talked about blockchain, talked about it's fully immutable. All of us should understand it's not true. It's quantum computers coming into the world and actually Azure just say they will provide APIs. So probably in next year we will not have anything fully immutable, yeah? But it's mostly immutable. And you could trust that. And actually as soon as it's saved into the blockchain, because it's a chain of blocks, all blocks will connect it with previous and change previous will be not so easy or change and one will be a little bit easy but again it will take an enormous number of computer time or time. And if we talk about blockchain, I want to be quite clear. First of all, cryptocurrencies and blockchain is not the same thing. Yeah? So Bitcoin 
it's something which created based on cryptocurrency or based on blockchain. But we have so many different blockchains here. And it's no one protocol, it's no one, let's say, authority could say, please use Hyperledger everywhere. Yeah? You have chose your own for your own product. And actually Hyperledger, Ethereum, Ripple have their own pluses, minuses, pros and cons. And if you talked about two billion clusters, it would be public and private blockchains. Yeah? So again, public, everyone knows about that. It's Bitcoin, Ethereum, and you could use it easily and start use actually close to immediate as soon as you could, I don't know, publish something into that. But all that have a price. Yeah? Each transaction in the public blockchains usually have some price or some kind of a price. And probably you could create amazing product based on that. But your product has to pay small fees in Ethereum. And right now just Bitcoin costs more than 8,000. And right now Ethereum costs less, but in a couple of years it could be cost again 8,000 your product will be out of profitability. So you have to be really careful when you consider it to use public blockchains. And private, if you talked about uh, enterprises, yeah, it probably will be the better choice. Because in private you have full control of the network. Yeah? So you actually could create it from the scratch. And probably if you talked about future, it would be not just like a blockchain, but more distributed ledger technologies. You could have million transactions per second. You could have more privacy because privacy is a big <coughs> issue inside of blockchain right now. You could control it fully. You could sacrifice something again, but you could add all features which you require. And that's choices which you have to down as soon as you're thinking about blockchain. And that choices which could help you down by your internal stuff or by consultancy. And that choices which we already help to solve to some of our clients. And right now we will talk a little bit about real cases. So let's start a bit with financial services and where we find real cases there. And I think the first one already mentioned by Dennis is cryptocurrency, even so understood. So talking to many intelligent people that this is not blockchain only because there are some other technologies behind it. But, but I think what was striking for me on the one hand to see for instance um, the market cap is means basically there is no standard. There are many, many people trying out this kind of uh, cryptocurrencies based on, bit, um, based on blockchain technology. We will see what kind of standard is going to develop. However, it's not only a fancy thing because we can see that central banks, governments, and companies are really starting to experiment how they can use cryptocurrencies going forward. So it's going to be, it has arrived already in sort of normal world that even governments and central banks are thinking about that. After cryptocurrency, I thought it makes sense, which every consultant tries to do, is to find a sort of messy overview of what happens in financial services on um, a blockchain. It's extremely difficult because we find that there are many people working on that. What we did here is we tried to plot down the three major consortiums that are working on blockchain technologies. What we find basically, how we structured it from the left to the right is the left is purely financial services, the right is basically going to a much more different industries. If we take the um, Eastern, um, enterprise Eastern Alliance, they have more than 150, more, more than 100 companies involved in this alliance to find, uh, based on blockchain uh, chain technology, um, any kind of application that makes sense. Um, the left side, the trade chain, no, I'm still on the hand. The trade chain consortium is a consortium um, trying to develop smart contracts for a foreign um, a trade. And as you can see as well by the overlaps, many companies are trying to participate in the several consortium to be sure that they are at the forefront of the development and they are not missing any sort of development that happens there. Basically, at a nutshell, this means many large institutions are engaged in this consortium to understand what's going on, to be able to adapt blockchain technology for their own businesses as soon as they are getting more mature. There are some um, financial services companies um, who are already working on that and trying out uh, blockchain technology. I think one very nice example is KFW. At 
a Frankfurt-based um, bank, and they are strongly engaged in um, the development activities in, in development air aid in Africa. And they basically try out blockchain technology, make sure that the budget they're giving for specific projects are used in the proper way and are really invested in wells or whatever they're building there. So it's a um, clear activity which is already used there in a real life blockchain we can find. Same is for ING. They started together with uh, Societe Generale blockchain on commodity uh, trades, in this case for oil um, trades. There was the, um, a first trial in September, and now they are getting in a more rolled out version from, from November, so basically from this month onwards. So we are seeing here real examples that blockchain is not only a fancy thing, but it's already it arrived in life, and um, financial services companies, banks in this case, are really working it and using it. Even in banking, they're on top of these uh, smart contracts topics, uh, fields like KYC, where you can use a uh, blockchain, and we believe there will be many more fields where blockchain will be used in financial services going forward. Yeah, thank you. And I will provide a little bit more examples for some real projects which we done for our clients and talked about. But before that, let's just try to do simple check. How many of you thinking about using blockchain in your current business right now? Could you please just raise hand or something like that? Don't be shy, yeah, because Right now, again, it's really nice story about use cases we got on blockchain. One company just add blockchain into their naming, and they actually triple their valuation during the night. But I will try to show some examples. That's actually one of the projects which I'm really proud of. It's done for National Settlement Depository, and it's connected with gear proxy voting, actually voting process for different corporate actions. Yeah? And the main thing, it's not just about one voting, you could use it in different voting processes as well. And the biggest issue with all that voting processes, I voted for yes or for no. And you told me it's like a 10% in results. Is it my particular vote in that 10%? How you could prove it? How you could show me my exact vote? And actually, yeah, proxy voting solution based on blockchain could solve that problem. And that's why blockchain here could bring some additional value. Because you immediately could see where you vote and you could prove it. Uh, but around that project we have some really big change because privacy inside of blockchain it's the big question which also will face by community around a few years. I probably don't want to share my vote results with everyone, yeah, so that's why I have to introduce some private transaction. And actually, it's possible inside of private blockchain, yeah, and it's not so easy inside of public blockchain. It has some mechanism like a mixing and other stuff around, but it's not natural way to do that. Another big, let's say, part of possible blockchain solutions, it's for different distribution, traceability, and here it's example of drugs distribution process. How they could prove me it's produced somewhere in the factory. And here, if you save all information into the blockchain, you probably have to do that the same way and you have to save it into the blockchain and all that transaction will be fully visible for all process participants. And actually the third example, a really short example about that. Florian already talked about consortium in finance world. Yeah, so insurance or insurance, yeah, or insurance companies really interested into the blockchain as well. And this is a consortium which try to provide information or use cases how we could use blockchain in the insurance. And application which we found really useful is application for travel delays. And it's again about transparency, it's, it's again about how we could add some additional value inside of blockchain. So if I bought some insurance for flight delay, I probably have no idea is it two, three, five hours it's enough to make some claim. And I have no idea where I should go and I have no idea how it will work. So based on that, you could create some smart contracts which automatically produce claim as soon as 
your fly will be delayed more than for an hour. And actually, it's fully transparent for all participants, and it's just the first step for possibility doing smart claims and other stuff for insurance space. And I have no case here, but also sharing information, personal information via blockchain, like a personal medical records or personal information in healthcare or in other industries, it could be also a great case. And at the end of our presentation, we should probably face the new applications. So let me start with the kind of opportunities we see in blockchains. Um, I think given the widespread of um, potential applications you just uh, showed, blockchain is a technology, so it's a technology usable for tons of different applications. I think the second part is quite um, interesting as well, costs can be reduced. Especially in financial services, when you introduce smart contracts in the area of trade finance, you can take away many sort of activities which are today done manually and by paper-based uh, activities. So processes will get smooth and easier, reducing costs. Um, the third point is quite important as well in banking. It's rather stable as one block is sitting on the next block. It's extremely difficult to change and to reverse actions we have been doing in the past. So the data is reliable, but the technology is very reliable. Um, very closely linked to the cost topic is the process optimization. Things are getting much quicker. So um, the payments transaction from one uh, country to the next is easier to uh, effectuate. The money arrives within a fraction of seconds, whereas today it takes sometimes days. And um, this is closely linked as well as efficiency. So the processes are getting better, efficiency are uh, getting uh, better. And these many, many different fields, not only financial services, but as Dennis pointed out, as well for pharmacies and for proxy voting and so on. However, I think it's pretty clear that it's not just opportunities, there are some challenges which need to be addressed as well. Blockchain is not a silver bubble. Yeah? So you have to have some minuses, and actually one of that is standards. It's not really minus, yeah, but it's issue. You, as I already told, you could not find any good blockchain, yeah, so you could not find any bad blockchain. You have to find your own blockchain. And actually, it's also connected with privacy, because some of blockchain have their own privacy, some not, but if we talked about public blockchain, it could be an issue. Performance, it's another big thing, and I know right now it's so many different great products which will provide to us possibility to have better performance. So probably next year it, we will not face that issue, but it was here a couple of years ago. And regulators and operational infrastructure, it's usually as something new coming into the account, you probably have no good ways to find how to work with regulations infrastructure, you have to decide by your own. And actually what I usually talk to our clients, your blockchain project will be a D project. Yeah? So you could not took just one technology and solve everything. You will have so many R&D things around. Yeah? And I think our panelists will show more cases and provide their own vision of the different questions around blockchain. Yeah? And here you can find some our contact details, so if you have any questions, feel free to contact me or Florian, and that's it. Thank you for listening.